Thank you. Good morning. We will call this work session to order. Uh, today is April 6th, um, 2020. Uh, 10 o'clock, and we are joining our citizens today by a different uh, mode, which is technology. Technology uh, advancement is very critical in a time, especially around, uh, uh, during this coronavirus situation. I hope and pray that uh, this is for the citizens of Douglas County. I hope and pray that you and your families are doing well uh, amid this coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, under the Open Meetings Act of Georgia, our meeting today is legitimate. And uh, certainly uh, as because of this uh, extenuating circumstance. Today, we will not have public comment, and that is not on purpose, but I will ask that our citizens, if you have any public comment, if you could email your individual district commissioners or myself or either our county administrator, and we will respond accordingly. Uh, thank you for your patience and, and consideration during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much for being here and welcome today. Um, certainly, I hope that you all have had good weeks, uh, a good week or so. We all have been extremely busy and we're so uh, delighted again to just be here on person. Everybody, I guess I will call roll this morning. Uh, Commissioner, Vice Chairman Robinson, are you here? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, Commissioner Mitchell, Henry Mitchell III, are you here? Terenia Carthen, uh, yes. District 3 Commissioner. Thank you. Yes. District 4 Commissioner. Ann jones guy are you here? Okay, so at least we, we, have, we have a quorum. Okay. All right, Board of Commissioners, we will uh, certainly start off. If you look at your agenda, we have the approval of the minutes, and that will be for tomorrow at 10 o'clock in our meeting. Um, so we just be prepared to approve accordingly, side. So I uh, encourage you to read your minutes this evening, and most of you, I know you probably probably already have read your minutes. Resolutions, uh, we have a resolution tomorrow, and that resolution will be read by, uh, it'll be uh, delivered by Ron Roberts. A resolution to pursue a 2020 Roadside Enhancement and Beautification Council grant in the amount of $50,000 to be used for transportation gateway projects with no match are required and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, is Ron Roberts, are you on the phone by any chance? Yes, I love this here. would be here today. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Ron, could you just elaborate on this for us? Absolutely. Yes, so the Roadside Enhancement Beautification Council grant is to support the I-20 Landscape Enhancement Initiative. Uh, the goal is to improve the four interchanges on I-20 through Douglas County, and this grant application and the resolution is in support of the I-20 State Route 6 Thornton Road project at that location. This grant uh, allots up to $50,000, which is the uh, maximum that, that is allowed, and um, that's why we're seeking approval for the, for the resolution so that we can add it to the application that we will submit. Um, it's my understanding that uh, projects uh, along I-20 will be paid for out of the tree fund. This is just a extra fifty thousand dollars to help us buy the plants and and uh, and participate uh, get GDOT to participate with uh, some of the project. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. We have any questions from the board of commissioners or comments regarding what Ron just presented. Um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Okay. <clears throat> Ron, can you hear me? I can. All right. Let's, let's see how this works. All right. Um, so this is for $50,000. We're enhancing um, our, our, our contribution or our investment in this area. Is that correct? What, what, type of, what type of landscaping is being done? Do you know? Yes, sir. We put together, I've got most of the, the application completed. I'm just waiting on some final uh, prices from uh, Hughes Ray, but it's um, there's a, just a litany of uh, different types of plants and things that were that were supposed to be uh, uh, indicative of the the region and uh, lower maintenance to maintain. I believe that the the the, 
the presentation uh, came through the Board of Commissioners last June, I think, from, from Hughes Ray. They had a slideshow and they showed uh, what they were actually going to plant at each of the each of the uh, uh, interchanges, um, each of the four interchanges through through the county that were identified for this project. Um, so it includes. Um, uh, I, I can't pronounce some of these, Commissioner. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. No, that's okay. So what what were the four interchanges, just for the public? Again, we we've, we've been out of pocket for a minute, so just be patient and then reframing what this is all about. Which four interchanges? Even though I know this is specific to Thornton. It's part of a bigger picture. Can do you know, or anybody else can um, weigh in? I know that. Well, I know Thornton and Post Road, and um, I want to say Lee Road. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the fourth one, Commissioner. So Ron, hey, this is Mark. Mark, hey, Mark. So Ron. the intersections are Liberty Road, Post Road, uh, Lee Road, Thornton Road. Okay, Liberty is one I forgot. Okay. And the Fairman role is primarily being taken care of what, by the city. Is that what this is about, Mark? Do you remember? Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. So um, I'll stay in my lane. Lee Road, um, Thornton Road. Um, now I know that the state came along and they did a lot of pruning back. Um, you know, clear, you know, cleared it out, and now we're going into beautify. Um, what is the ultimate vision for that for, for for that area? I mean, Madam Chair or whomever, who who can speak to why are we doing this? Are you asking why we're yep. doing the, the yeah, beautification yeah. project? That yep. was cer certainly it, 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 it sends a strong message to not only our citizens of Douglas County, but also to our visitors that we are open for business. And also it has a pristine look and it allows us to maybe just, it, it, it has a different feel for anyone that comes into our community. It's been a long time coming. <clears throat> um, nothing has ever, we never had any gateway signage in Douglas County no uh, landscaping and that's critical that number one that we compete with other counties because we're just like everybody else we want to be at least on the map when it comes to consideration for businesses to come here uh and shops and and, and malls and different other things that you know if we had a new mall or anything that wanted to come or any type of retail stores certainly we wanted to have a very uh pristine look so when they come in they, you know of course it, it would be no questions asked Does, douglas county would be the choice Right. So we want to be the choice, the leader of choices, should I say, beautification of choice for uh, Georgia. Yeah, and, and that was really just a step in, and in my closing comment. Um, you know, if you, if you think about it, again, Douglas is prideful. It, it, it doesn't necessarily want to be metro. It, it acknowledges its, its rural roots. But at the same point, it, 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 there's a different character areas here. And one of the things, I, I, being sort of the eastern wall, which is uh, my, my citizens typically say, well, I moved out to this bedroom com um, community by design, but can we, can we, can we cut the grass? C can we, and we talk about common areas, can, can we have street lights? And I, I think what I hear sometimes is that, but can we, I mean, it's okay to be organic, but can we have some, some, some style? Can we have some characteristic to it? It, it just, I mean, can we shape it up a little bit and stuff? So I, I see this is just enhancing our look. Obviously, when people come into our community along I-20 to get up as these inter um, interchanges, it's important that, I mean, it's, it's what, you know, ladies, y'all understand, impact walls. Yes. You walk into a house, it's all about impact. You roll up off that I-20, you're like, okay, what do you see? Do you see lights? Do you see manicure? So it matters. It matters about our character and stuff. So we're trying to take it to the next level. Obviously, each, um, obviously, um, um, intersection is a little bit different, but I think there's a consistency that's trying to be done. But I acknowledge what this is, what you guys are doing, Madam Chair, and support it. But I just wanted to highlight it because again, we haven't talked about these things in light of the, the, you know, obviously what's going on. And I just wanted to refresh the citizens' mind. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robson. Any other comment from any other board of commissioners? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Commissioner Guider. Uh, yes. Uh, Ron, uh, because of revenues being so low and everything. Could you explain where this is going to be funded, how it's going to be funded? Because it's uh, it's not tax dollars, so I, I want the public to know that. It's, uh, yes, ma'am, the, well, the, the, the bulk, this is funded from the tree fund, actually, Commissioner. Um, and that comes from developers that cut, cut down the trees. That cut down the trees. Replace, and if they can't replace the trees, they pay into the tree fund. Um, and uh, that money is uh, uh, available for uh, projects just like this. That's what uh, 
that's what the goal of the tree fund really is in, in the county. So it's already sitting there and ready for use. Um, this is just uh, it's dedicated uh, yeah. for this use. Um, I just wanted the public to know that we're not taking this out of our uh, budget at this time. Uh, so I thought it was important for them to see that or hear that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you all, um, I'll move on to the next item. Uh, County Administrator, could you give us an update? You have two things on here, but if you could just give the board an update now since we're talking about finances and what our plans are and what we've done, uh, how we've prepared in the last two weeks. So we got out of the gate a little early on finances as well, Commissioner. We just didn't only focus on COVID-19. We knew that it would have a, a revenue impact. And also we certainly, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson is working with the finance team. So I will ask Mark to kick off and then uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I'll just ask you to just, just give the citizens an idea of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Right now, nothing has changed. Uh, our, our budget is not on the ventilator yet, simply because February numbers have just come in. We don't have March numbers. So Mark, if you take the floor. Yeah, February splossed and lost numbers came in. Um, very similar to last year's uh, and as far as uh, what we've done proactive measures to take so we put a freeze on all the hiring of all new positions um, and uh, we've also put a stop or a freeze on all non-essential purchases so and I've had uh, a couple of meetings with uh, the purchasing director Don Evers and uh, Jennifer Hallman in finance and so we're watching the requisitions as they come through and it has slowed it down the past two weeks we have only had approximately 10 requisitions come through per week now we've got some older stuff that you know was submitted and is still coming through um, but as far as any new requisitions since we put this on on uh, I believe it was March 25th we've only had about 10 a week and most all of those are public safety related um, which are essential purchases. So we're going through those one by one and we're stopping uh, everything that's not essential. And as far as revenues go, we won't really see March revenues until close to the end of April for lost and supplies, uh, things of that nature. Thank you. Any, any questions for Mark Board of Commissioners before I And then we've also, Madam Chair, based on your direction, so I've met with uh, Jennifer Hallman a couple of times. Um, so we're working on a revenue recovery plan, um, and it's still a little bit early, but we we are thinking about it, and we're getting all our ducks in a row so that when we have the numbers, we're ready. Okay, Commissioner Guide, I believe you had a question for Mark, and then I'll talk to the cha chairman of finance, and he can give us an update about the the twenty five million that's here, that how that saved our life somewhat. Commissioner Guider. Yes, uh, Mark, um, the revenues, uh, the the uh, downfall of the revenues at this time is affecting the splash revenues also. So have we put splash projects on hold for right now? Any new ones, yes, but any any that are in the works, no, ma'am, we have not. You mean the um, ones that we already had new... contracts on and things yes. like that? Okay. But yes, any we new start, ones we, we're, we're putting on hold right now. Yes, ma'am. And then once we. Because this is going to affect splash revenues also. Yes, we think it will. Um, once we start seeing the numbers, we can recalculate the splash. And if we need to stop ones that have contracts, we can. We can do that as well. Oh, really? I didn't know we could do that. Uh, so. Yes, I'm assuming we can. But we're working on all that. Yeah. Uh, sure. Let me answer the commissioner's question. Uh, Commissioner Guider, the ones, as Mark just mentioned, that are in progress, we're proceeding because they are already in play. But the ones that are on the list that we're just going to have to draw a line right now and just hold off. So we're holding the line. But you have some projects that are already started. You know what I'm saying? So we, we're just going to understand. Okay. Yeah. Vice Chairman Robinson, you we, you just tell us about the the tan and the the percentage. Uh, we were uh, other counties are coming in much higher, and some counties are not able to even uh, uh, obtain a tan because of this situation. So, Vice Chairman, could you speak to our fortune here, Douglas County? How fortunate we are in Douglas County. 
Yeah, um, th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, obviously, we came into our budget cycle this year with a little bit more than a $100 million budget for easy math. And Jennifer Hallman, our finance director, um, went about making sure that she was able to understand our weekly cash flow. What does it take to maintain and manage this $100 million operation on a weekly basis uh, based on the cash that's currently in the coffers? At some point, we realized that you're going to run out of cash before the taxes come in at the end of the year. So typically, you get what's called a tax anticipation note. I call it a payday loan for government. Keep it simple. And it allows you to float your operation until all the taxes come in at the end of the year. Uh, we went a little bit early this year and a little bit larger. And I know there were some questions um, from the public of why we do TANS and, um, you know, why, why are we going so early? And I'll, I, I'll probably frame it this way. It's about fiscal maturity, right? Knowing what to do, when to do it. Had we not moved early and been competitive and got a lot of people involved in this um, and, and went in with the full amount, not just enough. Get what you need. As I've always stated, never don't nickel and dime. If you need it, get it. So I think our budget uh, requirements was about $21 million. We went all in at $25 million. So we were able to secure that. And I think Jennifer will confirm that that should be money already closed and in the bank now. But that $25 million will float us through the end of the year. The rate was 0 0.62. That's important. 0.62. Right. Our SPLOST was 0 0.171, 171. And that was a great rate, but this one was 0.62. That's incredible for a moderate sized county, guys. But the very next week, when this pandemic hit, everything broke loose. Everything went up. Grady's tan went to 4.65. Can you imagine us having five and six and 7% interest rates? The world turned upside down. So sometimes it's just knowing how to move. And I think we, what Madam Chair has asked me to give the public is, we got this. It's steady. We'll make the adjustments accordingly. And I'll, I'll use this as a segue. And Madam Guider, you're, you're accurate. Uh, there's two things we're looking at, SPLOS and loss. Yes, we've got the SPLOS. Uh, we did call for a recasting um, during our last meeting, a recasting of the SPLOS. We, we knew this from, from day one. We called for a recast, right? So we know that Terry... Um, and David Good will be working on that. And with Mark, these guys will come back by our next finance committee to say, okay, guys, all right, here's the line. Now, everything below that line, gate bets off. Not that we're cutting it. It's just sort of delaying it. It's the reality of the moment. It doesn't mean that we're going to do anything, but we need to at least highlight to say, and it's about setting the public's expectation. In other words, like, okay, we know, we, we, we know, we, we know that you had these expectations, and we'll get to it but I'm sure the public understands. Obviously the same thing with our operating capital. Um, obviously we've got a budget. We're gonna preserve and protect obviously our employees. But as far as these projects initiatives, again, they may need to be delayed, um, deferred, and we'll take it one day at a time. So later on the agenda, we've got um, David Corbin, the terminus. I think his contract is on the agenda. The intent is uh, to bring him in um, and we'll go through what's called stress testing. Um, one of his first assignments under this new contract and getting here like, okay, guys, just like he helped us with the budget, now we're going to have to redo this budget and recalibrate it and frame it in such a way, if this happens, if our revenue drops 10%, we do these things. If it drops 15%, we do these things. So it, it's more just a framing, some scenario analysis that we're going to be doing just to prepare ourselves. It's not reactionary, guys. It's planning. It's anticipatory. But it doesn't mean that we got to go out into the public and to our, um, our actual employees. It's not just sort of we're going to just go out and just cut everything. It's like steady, steady, right? Because, again, we just got to take it one day at a time as the numbers come in. But nevertheless, um, I wanted to give that just you know to respond to you, Madam Chair, that we are looking at our financials. We were solid. We still had a good um, credit rating, uh, accordingly from the rating agencies, both Moody's and Standard & Poor's. And like a lot of counties and municipalities, we are going to – Take a hit. Uh, I've been trying to suggest that for you know probably a, a couple of weeks. You're going to take a hit. Local municipalities do not have stop losses, right? We don't have a stop loss, right? So we got to be mindful of what's going on. But the citizens know that we, as district commissioners, are to you know check and balance. You guys know our job is to make sure that we're, we're anticipating these things. And since we represent the people making the right decisions to ensure that we, we ease the burden on the citizens. Um, it should be no big issue. So, Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you for the time.
Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board before I go further? Oh, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, I believe you're here. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes, I'm sorry, I had oh. you guys on mute. Absolutely. Oh, that's yes. okay, yes. I just wanted, do you have, okay, I didn't know if you had a comment or anything, I'm gonna move on if you don't. Do you have anything, uh, Commissioner uh, Carter? Uh, Go on, Commissioner Mitchell, go on. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, I don't, I don't have any questions. I mean, it was straight. Kelly and I and all of us have had many conversations. So, uh, yes, I know we are. I know what we need to be going and what we need to start looking at. So we're all good. Okay. Commissioner Carthen, I want to give you an opportunity. No, I'm good. Um, okay. This weekend, I did send out an email to my colleagues in regards to uh, some priorities that I did want us to look at. And um, I had already got with Jennifer um, Holloman about some of the um, cuts possibly to be made. So um, with percentages. So I just, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that we are being preemptive as opposed to reactionary. Um, we were preemptive in going out for those tans. We need to be preemptive in how we go forward with our uh, budget from here on out. Um, I do have a question for Mark, though. Um, what do we do about some of our bills that are occurring like every 30 days? Do we pay those in advance? Are we paying them on time? Or what, what, what are we doing in regards to that? No, we're paying them on time. Okay. So we have staff checking the mail. We're checking invoices. Uh, so it's business as usual. Okay. That's all. Yes. I yield, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carthen. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. All right. Yeah, we are working. Uh, actually, Mark and I started um, two weeks ago just on the plan. I know I've had a million balls in the air, and I know that uh, I spoke to Vice Chairman Robinson and I said, take the ball and run, and he promised and assured me that he would. And I know he's reached out to all our district commissioners. So I appreciate everybody's support and looking at the money. And again, I'm looking at our citizens as well. And, and before I go any further, I want to just uh, certainly extend my deepest condolences to the uh, loss of five citizens here in Douglas County as a result of COVID-19. Uh, my heart goes out to the families. Um, again, we, we, our numbers are at 91 as of yesterday for uh, COVID-19. Uh, 19 and that those five deceased are in that in the in those numbers so i just wanted to say that uh we appreciate all the support from our frontline um first responders and also our healthcare uh employees here in douglas county and just appreciate everything everybody's doing but again my heart goes out to the families of the loss of our five citizens so i'll move on um, let me move on, and I apologize for just mentioning that, but today, technology, we, we're doing something a little different, so uh, forgive me for not mentioning that at the beginning of our meeting. Um, business, I, well, County Administrator, you have two items, authorization to approve a MOU and GDOT to install <coughs> roadway lighting at I-20 and Lee Road interchange and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents, and I'm going to read tab number seven, and you can just tell it. Tell us about both. Authorization to approve an MOU and GDOT to install roadway lightning at uh, lighting at I-20 Chapel Hill Road interchange and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. County Administrator, please elaborate. Yes, ma'am. These two projects, um, along with uh, the other intersections on uh, interchanges on I-20, um, were approved a couple months ago. Uh, I think Greystone has most they have uh, Lee Road, Post Road, Highway 5, Chapel Hill, uh, Liberty Road, and Thornton Road, and then Georgia Power has Post Road. So these are the first two that's made it far enough into the GDOT process to have a mem uh, MOU, and essentially it's a maintenance agreement for the lights. So there's eight lights, two at each, uh, where the ramp hits uh, the side street, so there's eight lights in, at both of these locations, and essentially it's just a maintenance agreement with Georgia DOT that we agree to maintain these. And the rest of the intersections are coming. They're just not far enough along in the process uh, for GDOT to be ready for an MOU. Okay. Any, any questions from the board or comments? Commissioner Guider, do you have a comment? I believe you had a question for me about Highway 5. Did Mark answer that question for you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. he, he said it just hasn't gone through GDOT yet, but okay. it's in the it, it's in the works. But uh, Mark, could you explain where the revenue comes for the streetlights, please? 
Yes, well, as far as this revenue for installation, it was the 2016 SPLOST. So there was $500,000 set aside for street lights. So we have the ones that have been approved by the board on I-20. Um, and then we're really close to finalizing the remaining street lights throughout the county. And then we'll bring that back to the transportation committee uh, and then to the hopefully to the board of commissioners. All right, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. All right, we'll move on to our business items. Anybody have a question before I move on? Okay, I'm gonna move on to our business item. Tab number eight, authorization to approve a, a contract renewal with Terminus to serve as municipal advisor for Douglas County at a cost of $6,500 a month and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Holman, are you on here? Yes. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, uh, they've had a contract for uh, two years, so this will be their third year contract, um, and it's up for renewal. Um, they have not had an increase in the past two years. This one is uh, an increase. However, was speaking with um, David yesterday, uh, Mr. David Corbin yesterday, you know, in light of what, what what's going on now, uh, he said that he, you know, would be willing to, of course, work with us because all of this contract was um, discussed prior to the pandemic. Um, and we did bring it and talk about it in the finance committee meeting. Um, and it's recommended that uh, from the finance committee that we uh, approve or ask for authorization for y'all to approve this contract. Okay. Jennifer, if you could just be a little more explicit about, he said he understand, what is he saying? He'll, if we approve it, he'll wait a couple of months before it's activated, before it's active. Can you explain that? Yes. Um, he said that he would, um, in light of what's going on, that he would definitely work with us in the sense of uh, postponing the increase um, to, you know, when things uh, are stabilized. Okay. Any questions from the board or board or comments? Any comments? Madam Chair? Yeah, Vice Chairman Robinson. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. No, I, um, I, I have Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Um, um, uh, Board of Commissioners, I have, um, again, there was a full recommendation from the uh, uh, Finance Committee uh, prior to this pandemic, and so it was as is. Uh, the recent, or this this recent consideration um, being presented by the I, I have no knowledge of it, so, uh, but I get the point. Uh, I guess I'm asking the Board of Commissioners to at least approve the contract uh, based on the fact that um, your perception of what Terminus has brought to us um, over the past two years, um, they've helped really guide and help frame a, a, a financial discipline. Not that we didn't have it, but it took it to a whole nother level in how to look at our, our costs, our metrics, uh, and it's done a wonderful job. Even dealing with our, our, our economic development projects, uh, it was the level of analysis that I've always sort of yearned for to have here that, 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 that they brought to us. They're a great set of advisors, and Jennifer, I, I, I need you to validate that. I'm not trying to script or, or deal this, but our, our, should they go forward? I mean, we, we'll look to you. I mean, I already took my position, but Jennifer, you work with them day to day. I mean, obviously, um, obviously, he's for the full board of commissioners, but he works for you day to day. I need the public to hear, okay, who is Terminus? Because again, a lot more people don't get to see these type of meetings. Can you just give a little framework of how you work with them and the value that they brought? Absolutely. Um, yes, I definitely agree with everything you said, Commissioner Robinson. They have been... Um, very um, beneficial, uh, not just to me, but to uh, the entire county, um, to our board of commissioners. Uh, I really value uh, their input. Um, they're very professional, um, very um, open-minded to hear what we have to say, but also uh, put in what they feel like um, is their opinion. Um, worked very well with them on different projects from everything from economic development um, and, and helping with the tax abatement, as Commissioner Guider knows, um, as well as, you know, uh, this past budget cycle, you know, had David come and give some insight on um, our current budget situation. And so now more than ever, I think their expertise and knowing what other counties um, are doing and cities are doing is going to be very valuable for us to know. Uh, they're also, you know, the advisor to the state. 
so that speaks volumes of what they know and their res um, and how well respected they are. So definitely, I can't speak you know uh, any highly of them than than that. Right, right. So to that point, and I'll close that point out is. Um, you know, David Corbin was involved in taking us, to, um, obviously, to New York with meeting with the rating agencies for our SPLOST, right? Mm -hmm. So they've been with us for, for, for a moment now. And I, and I think that that's important to highlight. Um, and out of that came, that conversation came the need to have to create a long-term capital policy. And then they also were involved in our long-term capital plan, which obviously you guys got delivered to you right before, obviously, the pandemic hit. So they've been involved in more, they're, they're more strategic. They're not, you know, ac accounting backward looking, they're more forward looking. Um, they do a lot of different things, but again, um, I, I won't belabor this point, but I think again, since we haven't really talked a lot in a while, it just gives us an opportunity to sort of acknowledge that every now and then I mean, you have some consultants and they, they, they're, um, they're commodities. I mean, these guys really built a relationship with us and I, 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 what I preach about them is that they're candor. I mean, obviously they're certified, they have to, like accountants, follow the rules, but they'll tell you the truth about the numbers. It may not be what you wanna hear, but they're mm -hmm. honest and it's integrity. And so for that reason, I recommend that we go ahead and adopt um, and accept um, this, this increase and move forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner um, Robinson. I agree as well. I echo uh, certainly um, my first rodeo with the uh, Municipal Advisors Terminus was New York when we went there. And that was uh, quite a very uh, oh, I, uh, eye opening experience for me, uh, certainly being a new uh, chairman for Douglas County, and that was 2017. So I have nothing but high regards and respect for their body of work. Jennifer, you've worked with them, and we've uh, really, they're, they were responsible and instrumental in working with you on this 0.62% uh, for our TAN, right? We got out of the gate pretty early. Is that true, Jennifer? Yes, that is true. So we, I'm, I'm uh, highly impressed with their work. So sounds like uh, we all on board, and I'll move on to the next, unless someone else have a comment. Any Board of Commissioners I, have any other comments? I, I do, Madam Chair. Uh, okay, um, Commissioner Mitchell. Just just one quick question. I, I just want you to better explain, or Jennifer, you better explain to me to the, the delay. Exactly what does that mean? How much of a delay? Or does that alter the cost, or that just alter when we pay the bill? Is that all that is? Uh, no, not necessarily pay the bill. I'll get with him today. Like I said, we probably spoke on the phone last night around 8 30, 9 o'clock. Um, and he uh, just said that that was something that he was thinking, you know, because of what has been going on with the pandemic, that that is something that he wanted to, for at least me to know that that's something he's taken into consideration. Um, and that he wanted, you know, to make sure that that was something that I relayed or at least discussed with y'all uh, when I told him it was on today's agenda. So if, you know, I will definitely reach back out to him today and uh, get better details than just the brief conversation that I had with him yesterday or last night and uh, send that to you in an email. Okay, so what are we voting on, basically? Because I want, I, want, I want to better understand the delay as well as we're voting on the increase. So does that delay has anything to do with the increase or that has nothing of this, just two separate conversations? I think when I'm, and I apologize for that. I think when I said delay, I meant maybe a delay of the increase, not delay of paying them their, you know, their, what they are normally getting paid. It would be the delay, a possible delay or okay. somehow, however he would want to structured or work it out like I said we didn't really talk about the details but he did say just because of what's going on now uh you know maybe delay uh the increase um somehow pay it back to us in some form or fashion and I, and I'll get more of the details yeah so, 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 you, so you'll get the details as to the delay um and whether it will be paid on the back end but it'll still be paid I'm assuming uh, but I don't want to assume I rather know exactly what this is so before we vote on it, I'd like to know exactly kind of what the delay is so, so the commission will know exactly what we're dealing with versus just assuming that the delay means something that it doesn't. Sure. So. Yes, so I will we'll, get that today and send okay. y'all an email confirming what the details are. Sounds good. I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. All right. Well, I, all hearts and minds are clear. We'll move on to the next item. 
Tab number nine, authorization to approve changes to connect Douglas bus routes 10, 30, and 40. Director Watson, are you on here? Yes, ma'am, I am. Can you, can everyone hear me? I can. All we right. Can. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Well, what we're proposing today is we are, we do want to make changes to our routes 10, 30, and 40. These changes were discussed in the December and January Transportation Committee meetings. And also in early February, we went to each commissioner individually and explained to them the changes that we want to make. Following that, we had a series of four public meetings where we discussed uh, the route changes. The, the meetings weren't very well attended, but the people who were there had some great suggestions and comments. We didn't have any negative feedbacks uh, about the, the changes that we want to make. And in fact, uh, they, everybody was very positive about the changes, particularly the changes that we want to make to Route 40, which would take that route totally off Interstate 20, run it south on Fairburn Road, and then uh, turn left onto Lee Road and go back into the Lithia Springs area. So those are the changes that we're proposing. We, uh, we asked the commissioners to consider approving those changes. If the changes were approved, uh, they will go into effect probably mid-May after we sign uh, a new contract with our third-party provider. Okay. Any questions from the board or, or comments? Okay, yes. Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe you have some. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, no, thank you, Madam Chair. Just maybe a couple comments. Um, obviously, you know, regarding public transportation, um, we, we're still in our pilot program. And Gary, we're what, going into our second year? Or we're coming yes. to the end of our first full year? Yes, sir. The first contract will end on May the 6th, I think it is. And um, my intention is to bring the, the new contract before the board uh, at their first meeting in May uh, to where we can enter into that contract going forward. Yeah. And um, as we, as the board of commissioners agreed in times past, no significant route changes could not be done unless it was vetted by obviously the transportation committee and ultimately coming before the board of commissioners. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. All right. So this is really truly our first significant route changes. I mean, forget, you know, changing the bus stops and stuff. We're talking about true route changes. This is our first round of route changes. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the route for, um, 40, which obviously... Um, there was always, um, you know, I appreciate the Route 40. Um, obviously, when we're going through the process of, 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 of working through, uh, you know, where would, where would the routes go? And it was always this concern about getting over to homes, uh, HE homes, uh, MARTA station. And it, it, it was one of those where, it, it, Gary, I'm sure you can attest, that it was always about, you know, regional mobility alignment. That was important. In other words, Douglas is part of a bigger complex and system of, of mobility, you know, just like with I-20, just like with 78, um, just like with 166, it cuts across um, jurisdictional lines. In other words, it's continuity of, of, of mobility. And that being said, I mean, we went through a lot of um, conversation regarding that 40. And, um, and it's obviously the route that really connects the other three for the most part. But I, 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 can, I always have to remember, um, uh, you know, um, Commissioner Emeritus Moak here in our conversations that we, we had back and forth back in the day. And I, I remember he argued that Commissioner Robinson, you know, just, you know, leaving our jurisdiction and going all the way to homes, it's just, that's 43 cents of, you know, it, it's just, it's expensive and stuff, but, but, but nothing to be on the highway, you know, you're not picking up anything. And I remember I said, you know what, Commissioner Moak here, you're right, but we got to get to homes. And it was only because, again, Gary and Miguel, you guys realized that we worked over there with Lisa Cupid, um, our fellow commissioner over there, over, over, over in, in Cobb. We were able to work out a relationship that allows us to connect with their number 30 and go all the way over. So it was about a partnership. It was, a, it was, it was about thinking outside the box, as Madam Chair would say. It's, it's that we're part of a greater whole. It's not just about us. Right? It's not just about my individual. It's about all of us. And so I, I appreciate that number 40 that obviously connects us to the, the bigger region. You know, it's sort of like a hub, like just like with Delta Airlines, it only goes so far. I got to connect to the next hub. I got to keep moving. 
sometimes you can go around the world, but you know, uh, you can go to Japan for here in 15 hours, but sometimes get all the way on the other side, you may have to make a stop. And so I think that was important. The last point is, um, and that was something that to, to Commissioner Mulcair's point, why are we on I-20 in the middle of traffic going down I-20 when we can go down Lee Road, uh, go down Fairman Road and come over Lee Road? So I think that was also a, a very smart and savvy and important route change because again, we're not making, we're not picking up any passengers. We're not driving ridership as Commissioner Mitchell would say by having an, a bus on the highway. So I commend the staff for, for, for acknowledging um, that input and making that route modification. And so um, to that, I mean, we'll continue to make the modifications accordingly. Um, and, and again, so my last point, um, Gary, is that in light of the pandemic, and this is important, uh, what does the FTA or the Fed say about public transportation? I mean, obviously, you know, do we keep it moving, not keep it moving? What is the guidance that we're getting from the Feds? And I'll yield the floor, Madam Chair. Yes. Well, Commissioner, certainly FTA uh, wants systems to continue running as much as possible. And no system in the metro area has shut down. Cobb continues to run. Gwinnett continues to run. MARTA uh, continues to run. And, of course, we're running. All of us are running on uh, a reduced schedule. But the, there are still people who are depending on us uh, to get them uh, to work and to other appointments. Uh, one one good thing about it, we've all all of our systems have uh, endured uh, revenue losses because of this. But the good thing is that uh, FTA received uh, quite a bit of money in the stimulus package that was approved, and we'll be able to go to FTA to try to recoup recoup some of those losses. I understood that. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield. All right, thank you so much, uh, Transportation Chairman, uh, which is uh, um, Vice Chairman Robinson, and, and thank you so much, Director Watson. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is Commissioner Carthen. Oh, I have oh. a question for yes for Director Watson. Mm -hmm. um, Director Watson, when you say that the meetings, um, the public meetings, were sparse, how sparse were they? In <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, attendance at each one was in the neighborhood of five to six. Okay. That, that was it. That that was that was a disappointment to us. Uh, we used all the media sources we had to try to get the word word out, but uh, the public just didn't didn't attend. As I said, the ones who did come had great suggestions and comments, but we would just have, we would have loved to have seen more people there. While while we have the attention of some of the public, can you reiterate those media sources that we do use to put out public? Uh, information so that people will come to the meetings? Well, through our marketing consultant, uh, the Clarity Firm, we have a, a large social media presence. We use that a lot. Um, we took advantage of having Rick Martin and his staff uh, to send out email blasts and, and to blanket all the, the media like uh, the local newspapers, Chapel Hill News and Views, the Atlanta TV stations. And we got some great coverage uh, announcing the meetings from WSB TV, I know. And, and then uh, we also sent out a, a lot of flyers to the various communities and locations where we were going to, to have the meetings. So um, we took advantage of, of every resource that we had as far as trying to get the word out. Okay, and thank you for that. Uh, it's so important that um, our constituents know that we want their voices. We want to hear what their thoughts are in regards to the transportation. And so um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that we did exhaust all opportunities and, and all resources to get the word out to hear their voices. Yes, and that's one of the things that I am proud about this administration is that we do want to hear people's thoughts and concerns and opinions because this is not a monarchy. This is a democracy. Exactly. So, um, it's my it's second their point, transportation system, so we want right. them to, exactly. to let us know about it. That's right. And my second question to you is, can you talk about um, the changes that Connect Douglas has done in the wake of this COVID-19? Like, how are we uh, protecting the citizens and the drivers, and, and what are we doing? Well, first of all, we started running a reduced schedule. Uh, we're running our uh, Saturday schedule, 
which means uh, we're starting an hour later in the morning. And we also don't have uh, extra buses on routes during during peak periods. As far as keeping our drivers and the, the public safe, the drivers have been issued masks and gloves. Uh, the drivers wipe down uh, the buses at the beginning of each shift at the, and at the end of each shift. Uh, we have uh, memos on the buses uh, for individuals who are on the buses to practice uh, the social distancing. And we also, in fact, this weekend, uh, we, we had all of our vans and buses cleaned and sanitized professionally. That's good to know. I just wanted to let the public know that, you know, in wake of this, um, that Connect Douglas was doing his part in, in trying to keep everybody safe and adhere to the uh, the orders that um, washing, sanitizing, keeping distance. And now with the help of the CDC saying that people should wear masks, it, you know, it would help to cut down the spread of it. I'm glad to know that we are doing those things. So with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Okay, we're gonna Madam, move on. Madam, oh, okay, I'm sorry, um, yes. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, mm -hmm. just, just a couple of questions. So, so Gary, with the guidelines that um, the CDC uh, have put out. How, how are we, I mean, I'm assuming the ridership is extremely down, extremely low, if any. I mean, <coughs> yeah. when yes. it comes to the ridership. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and with that, so I'm assuming we're practicing not only the wiping down of the buses, but how many can be on the bus at any given time, or how, how does that work? I'm just curious to know. Well, with ridership down, uh, practice, practicing social distance, uh, distancing on the buses has not been a problem. There's plenty of room for them to spread out mm -hmm. and, and have a distance uh, between them. And as I said, we do have memos uh, on the buses, uh, and we've also asked the drivers to, to remind the patrons as they get on to, to, to spread out and, and not sit close together. Got it. And I guess my only... I guess question was where would people be going doing this um i guess stay at home type of a order from the governor but with that uh what effect not the cdc but what effect does this have with the change of the route that went down 20 and no longer goes, goes down 20 uh with Cobb and our relationship with Cobb and those who want to transfer to get to the homes and other places as such it's not it's not changing that that connection the only thing that we're doing is is taking Route 40 off of that stretch of I-20 from Fairburn Road to Lee Road. So what we're doing with that Route 40 is we're sending it down Fairburn Road and then left onto Lee Road uh, back up to South Sweetwater. Right. So right. so it, that part of the route has not changed. It it still goes uh, and makes that connection uh, with Cobb. Uh, and Route 40 has by far been our, our most popular, most utilized route. So we're not doing anything to negatively impact it. In fact, what we're doing, we believe, will, will increase ridership on that particular route. And I would agree. I would agree. I, I was just kind of making sure that that had no uh, impact on our relationship with Cobb and, and our agreement with them for that transfer for those who are trying to get to Atlanta and other places. So that it, connection still exists. It's, it's, it's still in play, yes, sir. You got it. Okay, outside of that, I, I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. All right, well, thank you so much, Director Watson. We're gonna move on to tab number 10. I'm sorry, tab number, yeah, tab number 10. Authorization to apply for fiscal year 21 CACJ, um, no, CJCC reimbursement grant for the Family Treatment Court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director King, Jennifer King, are you? Is Jennifer King on the line? Or Mark, Mark can you take it for me? Um, yes, Jennifer's on here. Um, so essentially both, the, did you mention both items or just the first one? Well, I'm gonna read, let me read the next one as well and then you can capture both. Uh, tab number, and my eyes are playing tricks on me. T tab number 11, authorization to apply for fiscal year CJJ, uh, CJCC Juvenile Justice Incentive Grant and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. So that's both grants. If you could um, explain to the board what these grants are, Mark, please. Yes, ma'am. So both of these are annual grants 
that juvenile programs receives um, from the state. And I'm looking, trying to look up the email really quick, but uh, uh, one of them, I think the first one is for 50,000. And I'm looking up the second one. Yeah, the first one's 50,000 and then the second one is around $200,000. And we've been applying and receiving these grants every year. Okay. I'm so sorry. I, this is Jennifer. I'm, my connection went out for a second. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Jennifer, you want to add more to what the uh, uh, county administrator just mentioned? Um, I, I Jennifer, can you hear me? All right. I think she's got some bad connection there or mm -hmm. Wi-Fi or something. So. Yeah, so... Board of Commissioners, you're okay with these two uh, items, 10 and 11, tab number 10 and 11? Okay. Yes, yes, We're going to move on. Mark, if you just uh, let Jennifer know that we we um, concur and we're going to move on, okay? We're going yes, to move uh, tab number 12, authorization to approve change order number 009 with the Motorola Solutions for the Public Safety P-25 radio system and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Fire Chief Spencer, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am, I am. Hi. Hi, Fire Chief. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Board of Commissioners, for uh, looking at this item. Uh, basically, all this does is extend the end of the contract to June 30th of 2020. Uh, when we will be doing the final acceptance. Uh, right now, uh, it was scheduled to be April 30th, but however, due to the COVID crisis pandemic that we're in, uh, and with the moratoriums have been placed, uh, Motorola has been asked to have all their technicians work from home as well. So uh, that, that's put the uh, testing of the system, the final testing, uh, they, they need to bump it out another month. Uh, it has no cost impact to the contract. Uh, and uh, we are currently using the system and the system is working well. This is just a, a legal requirement that's part of the contract. Thank you so much, Fire Chief. Any questions from the board or comments? All right, Fire Chief, sounds good. Thank you, I'm gonna move on to tab number 13, authorization to approve an annual renewal maintenance agreement for New World and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Martin, Russ Martin. Uh, yes, ma'am. So this is actually just a continuation of the annual renewal that we typically do with uh, New World. The reason that there's a new contract is we were actually under a five-year agreement previously. That five-year agreement ran out uh, over the summer last year. So we just, uh, or we, we, we made the last payment last summer. So this year we need to renew an agreement with them to continue maintenance. Uh, and that's what this is. It's a one year recurring. So, uh, as long as we don't give 90 day notice, uh, the next year will just pick up on its own. But as far as the cost goes, it's something we budget every year. Okay. Thank you, director Martin. Any questions? or comments from the Board of Commissioners. All right, Russ, pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much. We're gonna move on to tab number 14, authorization to approve a supplemental agreement number two to the consultant services agreement with BHB uh, for the maximum road congestion mitigation and traffic flow improvements uh, project in the amount of $24,900 to be funded from the SPLOST funds set aside from Highway 92 Mount Vernon Road for services during the project construction phase and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Director Valentin, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, yes, uh, now that the project is under construction, uh, we have some uh, changes and some plan reviews that we need to do in connection with this item. And uh, that um, 
will allow for the project to continue to move forward. Uh, we found at the intersection of Maxim Road and uh, Thornton Road that uh, the initial design did not uh, uh, account for the current uh, uh, radius that is allowed at the intersection. And so we're looking to make that modification as part of the ongoing services. Okay. Any questions from the board or comments? Okay, I heard yes, but I. Madam Chair. Oh, okay, Vice Chairman Roman. I, I couldn't make you, I couldn't understand. Okay, okay. Vice Chairman, right. there you Thank go. you. Greetings, Miguel, how are you? Good morning, uh, chair, uh, um, Chairman of the committee. Yeah, all right, we, we hadn't talked in a minute, so no, we're good. Uh, we hadn't talked, but real quick, um, obviously, again, just to refresh everybody's mind, uh, this project that we're talking about, Maximum Thornton Road, has been on the books for quite some time. And obviously, it's a, it's a major um, a major project as it relates to mobility, um, congestion, obviously, the eastern wall. Uh, we've got, obviously, all the traffic, all the truck traffic is going with that north-south on Thornton Road. Um, and obviously, we've got the I-20 corridor. Can you talk about what Maximum Road means from the Cobb and, and, and why we're doing this? G give that first, and then I'll get into my questions. Yes, certainly. Uh, Maxim Road is a, a major corridor between us and, and the uh, Cobb County traffic. And uh, that turning movement there uh, at the corner of uh, where the Kroger is, uh, is rather tight because there's a, quite a number of lanes, but it wasn't initially designed for truck traffic. And so this is an opportunity with the improvements, a little widening of the pavement itself and uh, some of the uh, alterations to the light, uh, we are going to be able to open up that radius to soften the radius to facilitate uh, turning movements by trucks onto Maxim Road. It is a, a fairly high volume uh, connection to Cobb County. And uh, so uh, with the signal improvements and the widening uh, it will certainly improve traffic flow. Okay. All right. So, so here's my question. And obviously, um, most people who have been here for quite some time recognize that, if I recall, that Thornton Maximum is one of the most dangerous intersections in the state, especially the metro area. Um, other areas can claim it, but we've had several deaths in that area. Um, um, what do you want to call vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to pedestrian? And so, this is something that obviously we've been. Um, even since Madam Chair's administration, we've had to deal with and recognize that area needs to be fixed. All that all that volume, and there's a lot of residents there, a lot of density. Uh, we have to do a better job of sort of, uh, you know, taking us from the place that we grew up as and bringing us forward. That being said, um, I, I want to talk about, while I support this 100, um, I heard that we're going to use the funding source from the Mount Vernon Road light. Now, explain that shift of money. Is there some type of savings? Um, that uh, we are able to realize from that Mer Mount Vernon light, or are we saying we're about to compromise that Mount Vernon light? Talk to me. Yeah, uh, no, there, there is, uh, in fact, the construction of the traffic signal is well underway. And the expectation is that the exposure that we had anticipated the county would have potentially is not likely to materialize. Uh, construction is probably about 75% uh, complete. And so far, there have been no additional expenditures that would incur uh, any funding from the county. And so the funds that were originally set aside for that uh, eventuality uh, can now be freed up, uh, at least partially for other uses. Okay. And we're accounting for that in our SPLOS, right? That, that is correct. Flight shift. Let's make sure we make a note of that accordingly. Um, but we'll talk about it in committee. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I know the citizens are very excited about that light at Mount Vernon in 92. That's been a long time coming, and I believe some work has already started. I've seen some movement. So thank you so much, Director Valentine, for pushing that effort forward. We're going to move on to tab number 15, authorization to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Georgia Department of Transportation for the county to provide in-kind services in connection with the LMIG and off system safety striping uh, projects and authorizing the chairman to sign all related documents. 
Director Valentine, I know we've already started striping throughout the county or restriping some of our areas. Can you elaborate on this particular item? Yeah, yes, certainly. We have we actually have two different uh, striping programs underway. Uh, one that is partially funded uh, through the state, and one that is being done with the state uh, with uh, county funds to some extent for the local match. And <clears throat> this particular agreement is really an in-kind services agreement. There is no funding required from the county. It is fairly typical and essentially what, uh, what the state is uh, requiring is that if there's any debris, any trash or any grassing that may be close to the edge of pavement, that the county go out and take care of that and clear the edge of pavement so that uh, when the, their striping contract comes through, it would be they would have the entire cartway of the paved area to stripe uh, on. And um, this is something that we do uh, as a matter of routine. Uh, but because there is a contract or a memorandum of agreement uh, that uh, that they require, it, it has to be approved by the ward. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners or comments? All right. That's pretty self-explanatory. We're excited about the striping. The, it, it gives us a fresh look. Is that you, Commissioner Guider? Yes, yes, yeah. Commissioner Guider. I can hear I you. I was raising my hand, but I don't know. <laughs> I can't see it, so thank uh, you. Uh, uh -huh. Miguel, uh, there's been a lot of complaints from citizens down toward the roundabout on Highway 5 and 166 and about the striping on, um, I think, Highway 5. Uh, have you got any kind of update on that? And do you have any updates on the repaving, repaving of Highway 166? It is Pothole City. It is a disgrace to this state. And I know it's a state highway, but do you have any update that you can give the citizens at this time Yes, I do, uh, uh, Commissioner Guider. I, I've had discussions with the District 7 Office of the Georgia Department of Transportation. Uh, they have assured us that they will be repaving 166 uh, as soon as the weather warms up. Uh, probably will be delayed a little longer than originally anticipated because of this uh, coronavirus situation, but nonetheless, uh, they have assured me that, that they are going to redo uh, the, the paving there in the summer. In the meantime, they will be uh, patching the potholes. In fact, uh, I took a, um, a gander out there a few weeks ago and I ran into, not ran into, but I came across one of the repair trucks uh, patching potholes. So I know they're trying to address the pot pothole situation and they will be starting the repaving pro program uh, in early summer. Well, let, let me interject. I hear from everybody that's traveling that road that the potholes that have been fixed, supposedly, <laughs> are creating mounds. And it's like a mogul uh, on a ski slope, I would say. And uh, it's just poor workmanship on the part of the state of Georgia. But uh, I, I assume when they redo 166, because it is a truck route now, <laughs> uh, when I say truck route, I'm talking about 18 wheelers, um, they will actually chew up the old asphalt and put down uh, a new layer. Is that correct? Yes, uh, that is correct. They, they will uh, mill the road surface and actually patch the bad areas before they put a couple different courses of new asphalt. So once uh, the project is the project is completed, uh, it should be able to handle truck traffic and have no more potholes, at least not for 10 years or so. What about the striping on Highway 5? That's uh, been faded out for years. Uh, has that been done or is it in the works? That is also in the works. Uh, they're, they're waiting for warmer weather. Uh, to but do you, just, you just can't see where the lanes are. Um, 
and also the lighting around the roundabout on Highway 5 and 166. Well, um, the state was supposed to install the lights and then work to maintain them. Do you know what the status of that is? Yes. Um, again, I, I had uh, conversations with the district office and uh, they assured me that they had uh, engaged a consultant to design uh, the lighting system. Unfortunately, when they designed a project initially, they did not include uh, lighting, although the county had an agreement with them that if they did, the county would pick up the tab for the maintenance and the power bill, and that agreement is still in effect. Uh, they're essentially now going back and retrofitting uh, that roundabout with uh, new lighting, but it has to be designed and uh, then bid out for construction. But that process is also ongoing. And I know this is kind of off the topic, but I don't get to talk with Miguel like some of y'all do. <laughs> so, Miguel, um, the uh, Highway 5 Douglas Boulevard, the state project right there at, um, is it CVS or Walgreens, whatever? The uh, Walgreens. Yeah. What is the hold of it? It seems like they have just stopped working there. Um, well, initially, the, the issue had to do with the utilities. Um, the, there was a relocation of uh, a stormwater line that had to occur and some work that was done by WSA as well to get uh, their utilities out of the way. Uh, that held things up, but uh, beyond that, uh, I'm not aware of um, why there would be a holdup other than the weather. Of course, they they cannot uh, excavate when it when we had all the downpours. But, uh, but I, I'm no, not aware. I would say since Christmas, when they fixed the water main issue and everything, there there has been no very little activity, if any, at that intersection. It just seems like it's been halted. And uh, yeah. could you check on that for us, please, and and get an update? I certainly will. Uh, but there has been activity there. Uh, because I've been out there, but uh, but you're right, it's taken longer than we had anticipated. All right. With that, I yield back, madam. Oh, okay. Thank you, Commissioner Guider. All right, any other comment? I'm uh -oh. going to... Oh, I hit, yeah. the wrong... <laughs> hit the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay, Board of Commissioners, um, certainly I just wanted to give us an opportunity to speak to the citizens this morning in terms of just provide some updates. And I wanted to see if Rick Martin is on the line by any chance and, and ask him if he could just uh, update the citizens regarding just the things that we're doing from a communication perspective. Certainly education is important and communication during this coronavirus pandemic. And we're doing some very creative things. We have a social media response team, a hotline. Are you available, Rick Martin? I are you there? Yes, Madam Chair. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. If you could just give us just a just an update. I know this is uh, impromptu. Didn't want to throw you off. Just same presentation you gave the other day. Just tell them what we're doing. The Board of uh, Commissioners so they can hear. Sure. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, commissioners, what we've been doing is updating our website, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com, with the latest news and information. Uh, we've been providing uh, situation reports that we receive from the EMA, not only placing it on Douglas County, um, I'm sorry, not only placing it on CelebrateDouglasCounty.com, but as well utilizing our social media platforms such as Douglas County Facebook Happenings page as well. Um, we've also been emailing uh, uh, our subscribers to Douglas County uh, happenings e-newsletter uh nearly 9,000 subscribers so we've been emailing communication to them as well uh regarding COVID-19 updates uh we recently launched a website hub that is produced by our GIS uh, department and we've been updating that daily uh with reports that we receive from the state as well as Cobb and Douglas Public Health 
So we've been communicating as much as we can. Uh, we've also uh, put together a social media response <laughs> team in responding to questions uh, that we receive uh, via social media, uh, as well as phone calls uh, in response to any questions regarding COVID-19, as well as answering emails when we've received uh, questions from our citizens as well. So we've been pretty much responding 24-7, um, not just myself, but my entire team as well. Thank you so much, um, Director Martin. Is yes. Director Gilcrest on the line? Is, is she on the line by any chance? She's our Director of Senior Services. I wanted her to give the photo commissioners an update, but if she's not, um, I, I, can, I don't. I don't see her listed to the right on the list of. Uh, okay, I'll just give the board of commissioners a brief update, and also I sent you all this information, board of commissioners, uh, via email. So if you have an opportunity, or when you have an opportunity, please take a look at it. What uh, we're doing, we're continuing our uh, meals on wheels. Uh, certainly, our um, non-medical. Um, non-emergency medical transport services are still available to our seniors. We are playing virtual uh, bingo uh, bingo uh, from the Woody Fife uh, Center to keep our uh, seniors entertained because they have to, of course, we have them uh, practicing social distancing. So all our seniors are primarily in, in their homes. Um, also, we, uh, we had to just uh, uh, right now suspend our homemaker services because that certainly is in violation of that social distancing piece, but we will activate it as soon as, as, soon as the coronavirus pandemic ends. Also, <clears throat> so we, what we've done, we provided an update or just a, uh, we've sent to 9,000 seniors an update and it's a guide, just giving them indications of what hours are available at various <laughs> grocery stores and pharmacies specifically just for seniors to shop. So that's something that we really, we are excited and our seniors have been getting that information and also about travel, Uber and Instacart and all the services that are available to them. Instacart allows the citizens to place an order and have their groceries delivered to their doorsteps and all the citizens here in Douglas County by, um, in, by and large. Also, we uh, have Sprouts that's been added to the list. Uh, for our citizens that said they want something more of like uh, Whole Foods, but Sprouts is on our list, so they, they can, you or anyone can order from Sprouts now. Um, we have a hotline that's been developed not only for the citizens of Douglas County, but we have a senior, uh, Dr. Gil Gilchrist has uh, activated a senior hotline. So, so the seniors can call in and just ask uh, specific questions uh, and, and express their concerns because the goal is to make sure that we hear all of our citizens' voices. And then also, last but not least, least uh, from the youth perspective, we had a youth, uh, our youth commission a chairman um, presented, uh, he had a PSA sent out to our youth just asking them to please practice social distancing, hand washing, hygiene, uh, all those things that are important uh, regarding this COVID-19 uh, situation. So we, we cast a wide net and what I did yesterday, uh, we had Jason uh, Milholland, who is Milholland, who's our Director of Emergency Management, um, sent out uh, to all our, it's called, called Code Red, an email uh, with the frequently asked questions from uh, about Governor Kemp's um, shelter in place executive order. And uh, Rick Martin has sent out that information to our Facebook, uh, which is happening, Celebrate Douglas, uh, we put it on our website. We uh, sent it to the city of Douglasville, to the school board. We're trying to just canvas the entire county. So there are some questions that the citizens may have about his uh, uh, Governor Kemp's orders. Those uh, questions, uh, the frequently asked responses are coming directly from the governor's office. So we are really trying to keep all our citizens engaged and we want to make sure that they are uh, at the table so they can hear all the things that are happening because things are changing by the month, by the minute. Okay, with that being said, um, uh, is Step, um, Attorney Stephanie Thompson on the line? Chairman, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, today, our, our um, Ken Bernard is not here, who's the attorney for the county. We have Stephanie uh, Thompson here. Thank you so much. She's representing his office and we appreciate you, Stephanie. Do uh, at this time, 
Stephanie, well, first of all, before I go any further, the Board of Commissioners, do you have any announcements for the citizens? Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I hear your voice. Yeah, yes. yeah. J j really quickly, and I appreciate the update of, of, of paying attention astutely to all the things that the administration was doing uh, to, to make sure that uh, the public is informed um, in light of um, Governor um, Deal's uh, no, Kemp. Uh, you know, no, excuse me, Governor Kemp, um, duly noted, Governor Kemp's recent action, his executive order. That being said, um, that means that we've been overwritten, right? We now are, have to be compliant with him unless we have higher restrictions. Okay. Uh, we can restrict more, but not less than. My question then becomes, which is, I've got to bring it back full circle. Um, are we still having um, a special call meeting um, this week first? Uh, and then the second question is that, uh, while we're telling everybody to back up, you know, social distancing and, and, and wash your hands, clean up, what are we doing regarding testing, right? Um, I, I appreciate the efforts that uh, in, in having the public do their part. I think it's in parallel. We have to do our part. And your opening comments, I think this is a perfect segue, great bookends. The opening comments was I mean, obviously we're acknowledging what has happened in our community, um, and obviously uh, it's not over. But but how we, we 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 get there is to understand where do we stand, and I have to emphasize where are we at with testing, um, and and how we're we approaching that because we we can't lose uh, sight of that. I mean it, it's great to tell people to go stand in the corner, go home. But what are we doing? This is a medical issue. It's not an administrative issue. It's not a political issue. It's medical. So, I mean, again, what are we doing regarding testing? Can you get, and you may not know the answer, but, but then I don't, I don't need a forced answer or a spin. I just want to know the truth. Where are we at with testing? Where? Resources uh, so that we can ultimately get the data that we need so that we can adjust accordingly. Um, and I'm, I'm okay whoever answers that. I yield. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Is our director, Jason Milholland, on the line by any chance? Hmm. Mark, is he on the line? Uh, no, ma'am, Jason's not on the line. Um, but uh, it's my understanding Cobb Douglas Public Health has been working to get more testing sites in Douglas County um, and more test kits. And I don't have an update on that as of today, um, but we will provide that to the board and to the public on the website when we receive that information. Okay. And I can I can chime in, uh, Vice Chairman, just kind of give an update. What I do know, um, we are looking at a testing site coming here in Douglas County. It is going to be uh, the the space that's identified certainly is 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 based on physicians referral because of the shortage of tests all over the United States. So it's just not for everybody. It's it's for physician referral and also of course our first responders. And that the testing site right now we're looking it will, will be at our public health department, but it just be a drive up. The same thing that most people are doing throughout the country. It'll be a station. Knows that be you you'll have a swab done and of course the test will be uh, administered and then of course the results will appear uh, within a 48-hour period now, but there's, there's a new test on the, horizon, on the horizon that takes about five minutes. So we are actually working uh, very intensively to uh, uh, obtain that test. And Dr. Meemark um, shared with, I spoke with her yesterday, and she said that test seems like it's almost uh, at our fingertips, but we don't want to celebrate too early. So I, I don't have any firm, concrete information about the five-minute test, but the testing site is we're looking at perhaps perhaps Tuesday of this week, uh, and we, we again Tuesday is really a soft answer because I, when I spoke to her yesterday, we are looking at Tuesday of this week. But uh, again, everything is still based on physician referral, and that's what it's been for all other counties, such as you know that I've been I tried to find out as to what has been utilized all over the other counties. But everything now, because of the shortage of tests in the state of Georgia and in the United States, is everything is based on physician referral. So. Uh, stay tuned. I hopefully I will be able to announce to uh, the Board of Commissioners on Tuesday. We've gone live, and then we will roll that information out to all the citizens of Douglas County. We do have more than just one area that's being tested. Uh, the hospital is testing. 
um, the and some of our physician offices are testing. Uh, Commissioner uh, Carthen had a, a town hall meeting this week, and Dr. John Johnson, I believe, is testing in his office too again, but he's a physician. So, Commissioner, I hope that answers your question. I don't have anything firm for you right now because I'm waiting on uh, Dr. Meemark to give me her final uh, a final update today. No, and, and, and you're fine, Madam Chair. And again, I, I wasn't putting you on the spot, but I believe between um, uh, Director Milholland and, and Dr. Mimar, we should be able to get our get an accurate answer, which right. is, and, and I and I get that we got the the, the the end result. We know how many people have been infected per se, um, and we know how many people um, obviously we've lost. But um, again, uh, my concern is, but guys, we need to know about the, the, the asymptomatic, right? And so it's like we're re, our, our approach to testing is, well, you gotta get in queue and you gotta wait. Well, we're, we're, we're it's an approach that's not anticipatory. I wanna know how infected is the garden of Douglas as a baseline. And I'm not saying test everybody, but I believe that there's, you, there's plenty of models out there. If this is a medical approach, well, do we need to test 3,000 people, 5,000 people? I mean, and I'm, I'm just not getting the direction from our public health that I think we, it's like, I'm like something's lost here. Like, okay, guys, this is not rocket science. And, and I'm, I'm hearing a lot of, I'm only concerned about Douglas. I'm not concerned about the surrounding counties, the surrounding states. I'm concerned about Douglas. I'm like, I thought our lives were at stake here. Can we get a straight answer from our public health regarding how are you going to approach testing? I've had enough surgeries to know how important when somebody, when you're gonna take action, they come in there, well, we've got to test first and figure out where things are, then they prescribe. I thought this was medical. And that's what I'm, I'm so it's not you, Madam Chair, and it's, it's really, I'm just looking for, and I think all citizens are wanting to know, well, where, where do we stand as a baseline? Then you can go from there. But that asymptomatic is really the key. So I'm, I'm not looking for you to answer this. I'm looking for the guy, the, the person with the medical doctor that, that caused no harm. That doctor to sit there and say, okay, here's how we need to approach this. And I'm just not hearing it for Douglas. I'm, I'm still looking for the data. I mean, I see a lot of stuff coming out of Cobb. I see a lot of dispersion maps. I see a lot like, okay, but what about Douglas? And so, I mean, obviously you guys, I mean, to my peers, you know where I'm going. And and I really, um, Madam Chair, and, and so I still didn't get the answer. Are we meeting this coming Thursday for a special call or no? Uh, Commissioner, I'm, I'm unaware of a special call. Uh, okay. Mark, can you brief me or are you aware of a special call that was supposed to come down the pike? No, ma'am. I was not aware of a special call meeting. All yeah, right. that's uh, yeah. All right. so, so, did we not say we would revisit uh, what we put in place two weeks ago? And, and if you're saying that the governor has overridden that, that no longer exists, we said we would come back. Yeah, and, yeah, the, yeah. The governor's order supersedes our, our shelter in place that we approved so his his order uh, ends on the 13th and certainly if he extends here's his is still that the one that we have in place is null and void. all right so which is to my point why i had to insert this today thank you right. thank so, you for saying yeah, okay. the, the introduced thank the you. Data. yeah that was all because i chair. wouldn't have enough chance Madam, oh, no, not finished. <clears throat> okay commissioner guider yes uh, just to elaborate a little bit about the the new test has been approved by FTC and uh, it's by Abbott and yes. it will give, it will give um, results in five, about five minutes mm -hmm. and they are producing it as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, although this is uh, a new virus, there was no test for this new virus because we didn't know about it. So, uh, the government has already got a contract with Abbott to produce these tests and they're being made as we speak. And they'll yes. give fast results. Uh, we won't have to wait two weeks to get results and you don't have to stick the swab all the way down your nose. I think it's actually done with the blood test. I'm not sure about that, but um, that's good news. That is very good news. Yes, ma'am, it is. Thank you so much. Um, you, are you yielding back? Commissioner? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't want to interrupt. Yes, that five minute test rolled off on March 27th from Abbott Laboratories and uh, uh, we were, well, the laboratory 
I, there was a problem with the swabs. The test was there, but you didn't. We didn't have swabs. But I believe we have those swabs now in the United States, and we're able to move forward to uh, the su supply and demand. Just basic uh, economics, which was not one of my favorite courses in college, but I know that if you don't have supplies, you can't make them meet the demand. And that's been the problem, not only for uh, the, the world or the United States, but it's for Douglas as well. It's been supply and demand. I believe the plan, when we pick up and get those uh, swabs, and, and uh, uh, Dr. Meemark didn't want to celebrate with me too early because we didn't want to tell you that and give you the false impression that they're here, but she said she's working on it. I spoke with her yesterday. And when we get the, those five minute tests, that will be a game changer, not only for Douglas County, but it'll be for the state of Georgia. So um, any other board commissioners, you have any comments before I ask our, our Stephanie Thomas, our attorney, if we need to go into executive session. Uh, I do have one, Commissioner, Commissioner Mitchell. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. yeah, and just to relay back to what the commissions, the board of commissioners are asking, and, and I'm have to say this as delicate as possible, public testing mm -hmm. public re, the public is crying out not only to be tested but to understand where we are as a county but it appears that we get the song and dance and not that in a bad way but we just need to know kind of where we are but we're part of douglas and we'll call douglas uh board of health now with that from my understanding Cobb has roughly two or three sites of drive up testing. Don't know how long it takes, whether it takes 15 minutes or it takes return results in two days, but it exists. My question is why is it that Douglas County being a part of that don't have one site? Now, I'm not looking for an answer from you, Madam Chair, but I'm looking for an answer as to why don't we? because it's about the public and it's about the public being tested to know exactly where Douglas County stands. And we're in the middle of Fulton, Cobb, Paulden. So I, I would believe once we test, we'll better know where we are as a community to say we may be a lot worse off or we could be better off. I don't know, only because we don't have the test. So my question would be to add to the question, the Q&A, why don't we have test kits or where can we get more test kits? And if that means the Board of Commissioners need to stand firm on funding to get this, because I think down the road we'll probably get this money granted back to us, but we can't stand by and wait versus trying to move forward and getting some sense of comfort as to where we are, where are the kids, how can we get access to the kids? Because I know most of us have been talking to our state representatives and even some folks up at Congress that I've reached out to. So, But I, I'm just concerned that it doesn't seem like a sense of urgency to get the kids to Douglas County outside of testing the few tests that we've done. I don't know where to place this you know, not to say we're trying to place blame. I'm just trying to see where can we help. If it's our call for that has to fund it to get it here, then let's do it. And I think this commission would probably do that. But we can't continue to sit and wait only to find that we may be in worse off shape than a few other counties that surrounding us versus let's just wait and see and, and, and decide on where we go from here once we get the next answer. That's kind of where I am. I, I'm, I'm looking for an answer. I'm not looking for, because the citizens are asking us, and I know you're probably getting just as many calls and emails as I am. Where are we? How can we find out where we are as a county, as a community, versus, well, we got three kids or we got five kids and it's at the Board of Health and it's at Hunter Park. And correct me if I'm wrong, is there a, a, a supposedly a, a Hunter Park is supposedly be a place of testing here soon or later or or was that um, happen or didn't happen? Can somebody help me with that? Yes, Commissioner, I can certainly help you with the first I want to add to your discussion or your some of your comments. Lisa Crossman was at my town hall meeting. I hosted her on Thursday. She spoke specifically to Douglas County and where we are in a position provided a power power 
PowerPoint presentation so we didn't veer off course and talk about any other county but Douglas County. Uh, your other question, I believe, was what was your what was your second question? You wanted to know <laughs> okay. where we are with our testing. Um, our testing, we have had referrals just like everybody else's, it, and, and it's based on physicians' referrals. So we're not delaying any of our tests. Everything still is based on physicians' referral. And we have more than just uh, COPS testing site. Again, like I said, the physicians' offices, some are testing, and the hospital well stars testing uh, quite a few patients, especially the ones that are being uh, recommended by our, our, our physicians' office. So we have not just sit here and not done testing. We have 91 confirmed. Uh, the number is still increasing. We are sitting on the wall. I'm, I'm surprised that some of the, even the ones that have been referred to the, by the physician, because we sit in the armpit of Fulton. If you look at that line, the way the map is set up, we are on the border of, of Fulton. I'm surprised that there are not more. It may be more. Again, the problem has been just this, this, uh, this shortage is not just only specific to Douglas County, it's specific to the whole nation. And the money is not the problem. Uh, the public health department, we have plenty of money in our fund balance. I'm, you know, I sit on that board. I'm one of the board of directors. So we have the money. And as uh, Dr. Meemark said, it's not the money. It's just the ability to get the supplies. Hopefully this week we have some more promising news. And I'm going to you, answer your question about Hunter Park. That was on our list. But in order to expedite it even faster, we're going to go with the site this week at our public health department. You know, the library is closed, so we're going to open that site up, and they're still working on the Hunter Park site. So it may be an opportunity for two sites here, Commissioner. So, so okay, let's use Hunter Park. I'm not mm -hmm. sure as to who came up with that idea of using Hunter Park, but that's okay. Hunter Park and the site of the public health. How many test kits do we have? Should we make a, a public announcement that we have one or 101 uh, kits, or are we just testing the workers or the frontline individuals? Kind of where are we with that? Because I think I think we're just we're just not. I don't know if we not. Okay, I'll 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 let you. I'll I'll ask my next question after that though. Go ahead, Madam Chair, if you want to oh, comment. No, I, I don't have a response simply for oh. Dr. Meemark. That's that's the physicians, public health officials. I was the physicians. I'm just giving and relaying the information that she has given me. Certainly, um, when we get off the call, I have a, another call with her, to, her today. Uh, Douglas County and other counties are the same. Like I said, I do know Carol has a uh, abundance of tests. And what they did early, they got out of the gate a little early and purchased quite a few tests, but they're just not testing all their citizens based on what I've received. They retake, they're still on physician's referral. So everything is re uh, physician referral and frontline. Uh, okay. I believe that's why that social distancing piece has just been so important because, again, you could be tested today. For example, if I, if I go to be tested, and I'm going to put my medical hat on just for a second, and I go and I'm negative today. But that does not mean that I'm not going to be negative tomorrow if I go to the store oh, and in the I room. Understand. So that's what I'm saying. So that we're trying. That's why they're trying to okay. utilize the testing uh, effectively. Got so. it. Okay. But I, I still think the test kits is what I think I hear that we need. But let me ask one last question. Yes. You said 91 confirmed. Yes. How many tests were done to even get to that number? Or do you know? I mean, that may be a question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I would have to get that information from uh, me, Mark. See, that's and me. that's why I think maybe it's me, and 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 I can't speak for the rest of the board. That's why I feel like we're the, the lack of. It's uh, not that. See, not, I can I can ask her for that. We can get how many tests were done well, and how many I, were confirmed. I, I, I've talked to Dr. Mimar, so I, I mean we've had many conversations. So I, I mean I can ask that same question and and I can pose uh, many questions outside of that. But um, my concern is public testing. Now, whether you test today uh, negative, test tomorrow positive, mm -hmm. but, but, but how many tests that we need or we trying to get to do a, the public outcry of being tested, how do we get that, that need met? And it's not a question for you though, Madam Chair. I'm right. only making a statement. So mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. of that, I, I'll yield the floor and you guys can kind of continue on. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Guy, it look like you want to say something. Well, I, I do. If, if oh, <laughs> okay, Commissioner Carson. Hey. <laughs> hey. So, um, 
One of the things that I think um, the public is confused on is private testing versus public health testing. Private mm -hmm. testing means you will come out of your pocket for that testing. Some insurances will cover it, some will not. If you test and you test negative, that is coming out of your pocket. If you test positive and you have to get treatment, then that is when the insurance company will pick it up. So I just had to put on my hat for you know insurance to, to let people know. So, um, but public health, your testing is free. So that is why I think a lot of people, you know, in this day and age, they would like the public health, you know, and, and I'm of the same sentiment as um, my, my other two previous colleagues that, you know, we have to push and be very forceful, especially in this time for our particular constituents. And I'm really concerned about uh, the ones that have called me, my seniors, who, uh, who have a number a referral from their physician to get tested. And again, they can't go to Wellstar because Wellstar is not testing them. Yet they can't go to public health because it's too far because the public health site is in Marietta, which I think, you know, speaks for itself. We we should not have allowed for Cobb Douglas Public Health not to put at least one site in Douglas County. That just did, did not sit well with me when, when I found that out. Um, however, I just want the public to know that there, there is a difference. Public testing and private testing are two different things. If you have a concern and you really want to be tested, please ask your physician to call around to a private physician and see if you can push testing. We don't want anyone to be uh, in fear of not having um, the test or exposing your family. Um, but with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other comments from the board? Commissioner Guider, I see your face moving. Are you saying anything? You good? Okay. I'm good. I'm just, you know, I'm hearing a, a lot of negative uh, things about the uh, Cobb Douglas uh, Public Health, but they can't get something that's not made yet. Uh, this is a new test that has come out that is effective and gives results within five minutes. The other one, as you heard, uh, Dr. Neymar uh, say the other day that it took two weeks sometimes to get the swabs back that go way back into your nostril. But uh, this is an entirely new one and it's being manufactured as fast as they can do it. They just were released to do to make these tests and they're coming down the pipeline and just remember we've got, I don't know how many what the population of the United States is, but I assure you some of these hotspots are going to get it before we do. It's just the way it is. But we'll, we'll get them but it, um, as soon as they can make enough of them. But um, I do think that we should have had a testing site here in Douglas County uh, because, I mean, why not? If they've got three, why shouldn't we have had one? So uh, maybe we can address that at a later date. So with that, I yield back. Thank, Thank you sure. so much, Commissioner Guider. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, <clears throat> real quick, and I we, we can close it out, and I agree with Madam Guiders another day. All right, so again, back to my point, which is it was always about testing and data, right? I, I get the sheltering in place, right? That's the citizen part, like, okay, go to your corner. But what is the administration doing their part? They don't get off, get off the hook. There's so much emphasis on what the public should be doing. But what is the administration doing to co coincide with what the, the impact, loss of business, you know, perhaps loss of life, perhaps um, just 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 the, the mental duress that's about to come, the tsunami coming over the wall. And, and I think what you're hearing from the, the collective voices of the commission, like, look, there is no urgency. It's like, well, we're going through the process. It's all this, we're, it's excuses. I thought our lives were at stake. There needs to be a little bit more urgency, right? Douglas County is one, one in the top 20 in populous counties, and yet we're being swallowed by Cobb. I mean, obviously, they're, big, they're part of the big five. We'll never be them. But we can hold our own. We went through this with our community service board. We need to separate from Cobb because we can hold our own. 
And that's what I what, that's what I peaked the other day while I had to vote no. Like, wait a minute, they getting everything over in Cobb? It's like, well, what about Douglas? Y'all get like, well, what about Douglas? And and quit giving them room to say it's okay. No, it's not. I'm not anything against Cobb. Go on, Cobb, do your thing. You taking care of your own. But we're being swallowed in this thing, and it's like nobody gets the fact that, like, no, guys, it's unacceptable. We're the 14th most populous county in the state, and yet we have no testing. It's not that we're broke. You're right. It's not about money. Then what the problem is? It's not about we've got buildings that we can't use, whether it's, it's the mall or wherever. That, okay. It, it doesn't seem like there's no focus. I don't want to hear about something new and innovative. We hit, like, guys, are y'all not paying attention? You got to move faster. Move faster. That's all we're saying. I appreciate Commissioner Mitchell's point about like, well, we got we, like, no, you got to call it. Our lives are at stake. You can't open a meeting and say we're losing life, but then yet we're talking about a bureaucratic process. Well, we'll get around to it. Like, no, my life is at stake. All right, so that's where you see more of a, a more direct like, okay, my family's at stake. My neighbors are at stake. My district is at stake. Like, no, they, they, the state and the agencies don't get off the hook to say, well, they just like, no, I thought our lives were at stake. Right? This, this is not optional. There's a pandemic. We're not in control. So it, it just needs to be a better alignment of reality. You can't have the public jump through hoops. And then we as the administrator just sort of like going business as usual. They need to be aligned. And that's the whole point. Like, well, what about the citizens? No, take care of the employees. Take care of them front responders. Got it. Right. But at the same <clears> point, the public has a, they have a right to know where we stand from a testing. Right. I, I keep emphasizing that. Like, OK, well, what is the condition? Quit rationalizing everybody around us. I want to know, OK, if I'm doing this, if I'm taking hits on my, my, my digest, I'm doing all these things. Well, what's my condition? Test me. If it ain't about money, what is the problem? That, that's why it, does, it doesn't make sense. It's irrational. Why don't you want to know the truth? Why are we suppressing the numbers? Test the people to get a baseline to understand, are we high risk, moderate risk, or low risk? See, I'm not seeing the advanced medical, because I can look at the other places, as you say, like, okay, we're not talking the same, the right language. It's just like, it, it's not like, come on, guys, our lives are at stake. So again, since we don't have a chance to go, you know, now the governor has taken over, that's fine which should have been done from the beginning. I, I get it, but we became data points for him on his map to say, well, he need to do what he need to do, but yet we still are lacking data for us. Where's my dispersion map, right? I see Dr. Mimar out on TV for Cobb, like, okay, but where's my data? Because we haven't tested, right? So when you, it's like, guys, we have no idea. And again, it's the asymptomatic, it's the issue, not the referrals of people who are like, <laughs> coming in, it's that's the issue. It's that silent person. We want to get into this rationale. You gotta you gotta get out in front of this. Yeah, it's like, okay, it's like we just, it's not making sense. Right. So I, I pray that 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 people are hearing this, that the public will continue to put pressure and demand this. It's it's like we want testing. I mean it should be up tomorrow. It should be up by the end of this week. Not we'll get back to it. Give me a date when it's gonna be up. It's been two weeks and we're still talking. It's been two weeks. I can only imagine what the data, we went up to five, we went up to 91. Like, are y'all not paying attention? So where's, like, let's get ahead of this. It's not over. So anyway, I, 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 I again, our lives are at stake. The rest of this stuff that we're talking about and then it was, while it, it's important, we got to keep the government going. I mean, we, we can't lose sight of the fact that like, okay, we are in a pandemic. I'm not just sitting in my home having this, this telework like, as if that, that, that virus is not still out there. So it, there needs to be a mapping of our of, of like, no, we get it. And, and recognizing the public that we we hear you public that are now beginning to wake up to the point of, yeah, well, where does Douglas stand as it relates to testing? So we appreciate your commentary because again, we will advance that to say, so we need to know where we stand. Uh, we're not asking for a vaccine, that, that'll come. Dr. Ford saying they got that, they're in the corner, let them do what they do. But in the meantime, you got me in the corner. Okay, so where, where do we stand? All right, so you guys get it. Hopefully we'll work through this. And Madam Chair, it's not yours to handle. Um, uh, again, it, it, it's really a public health issue. Uh, and, um, and so I yield the floor. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner. We're gonna 
that, okay. Yes, Madam Chair. I, I, I think that was Mark, but I'll. Yes. Go ahead. Go on, Commissioner Mitchell. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And, 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 I'll, and I'll close and I'll, and I'll leave this alone, but I just wanted to make sure we understand this is not about uh, Cobb versus Douglas. This is not to tear down or, or say any bad things about Cobb. I think my colleagues and all of us are, are, are trying to understand if there's a need, if it's dollars to get kits, if, and it's not about the old kit versus the new kit. It's about getting tested. Um, whether you are tested positive or negative, we'll deal with that when we cross that bridge. But my biggest concern is the urgency doesn't appear to me that we have a sense of urgency. We just have a sense of, okay, we'll wait and our turn will come when we get there. The citizens of Douglas County are just as important as those in Cobb, Fulton, DeKalb, and any place else. What will it take for us to show the urgency to our constituency that the test is important? We hope that you don't have it. I hope that it doesn't cost your insurance company and or yourself any other dollars and cents. But I'm willing to fork out the dollars to make sure that I'm tested and make sure that I'm I'm good to go versus trying to wait to see whether I get the new kit or the old kit. Whether it's going to take me two days to know, I mean 15 minutes to know whether I'm positive or not, or two weeks to know. So I just hope we don't lose focus on the need and the necessity of having the test done. And for us to be a part of a Cobb Douglas uh, family. I just can't quite understand for them to have two or three sites of testing, but yet we have zero. But just now we've got Hunter Park now and or the public uh, building the public health office to do it there as well. Or you can go to your private doctor and so on and so forth. But for the general public, the only request that I'm getting or the majority of the requests are when how can we be tested to assure that this community is safe? I think we're practicing all the CDC guidelines, but how can we assure these guys that they are, they are not, not a positive one within our family, the Douglas County family? That's all. I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Also, I just want to chime in before I give you the floor, Mark, before I yield the floor. Uh, there is an, it, uh, it's been a very blatant, and uh, um, very out front urgency uh, on my behalf. And certainly I, I'm not going to defend Cobb Public Health, uh, Cobb Douglas Public Health, health uh, doctors or physicians, <clears throat> but I've been standing on their desk and I have not just stood on their desk. I've gone to Senator Dugan's office and I've even gone up to the U.S. Senate to talk about this. And at the end of the day, we have the money to buy tests, we the tests are not available. It's again, supply and demand. I feel just like you, very frustrated because the test is not there. But as a 40 year healthcare and, uh, professional, I would be remiss not to just go crazy. But my style is to remain calm. The citizens elected me to be a calm leader under uh, extreme pressure. And I'm telling you, I am behind the veil, just pounding on those desks. I had a conversation with Dr. Meemark yesterday I talked to her at least once a day, and that news that she shared with me on yesterday was great. The good question is, why don't we have something in Douglas County? That's a question that me and her, our, our debate we'll have later because Douglas County needed a site as well. We did move forward with the community service board because as a result of me wanting to take that community service board and just go solo with Douglas County, uh, only for Douglas County, and I appreciate the board of commissioners stepping up, providing the $450,000 uh, overlay uh, yearly to help support that effort. And that's something we could talk about going forward. But this coronavirus pandemic sneaked up on all of us. So they're pivoting. I, I'm placing pressure. Lisa provided a dispersion map presentation to the citizens of Douglas County. She had that map available at my town hall meeting uh, on Thursday. And uh, we had uh, at least 15,000. We had quite a few people, at least over 1,000 people on the uh, internet looking. We had a Facebook Live. So the map is there. So some of the things I, I know, I'm, I'm just as, as frustrated as, as my district commissioners, and I've been pushing and pushing, but uh, on the outside, I have to remain calm 
so I can get some results rather than, you know, like I say, I'm standing on everybody's desk saying what we need. We need testing. Money is not the problem. It's just that the, 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 the supplies is just not there in the United States. We're looking at New York. We're not looking. We're looking at uh, Illinois. All those. We're not the only ones that are crying. This is a nationwide crisis. In Douglas County, I'm, I am the biggest cheerleader, and I'm up front fighting for my county. And believe me, I've been fighting since the moment this thing took place. Right now, the only thing I can shield us with is education and prevention. Is Social distancing is key right now. That's our weapon and our hand mm -hmm. hygiene until these tests come available and keeping your surfaces, your metal surfaces at home, your stainless steel surfaces clean. I wish I had a, a remedy that I could wave, a magic wand, but what I have done for our citizens to give you a weapon to, to defend yourself until a test is available. And I believe that tests should be available real, real soon. I'm hoping I have some good news for the citizens this week. Mark, can you take the floor? Uh, yes, ma'am. So I just received information from, uh, so Cobb Douglas Public Health, they're ready to test in Douglas County. Um, they have appointments made tomorrow at the health department on Selman Drive. Um, and how do you get those appointments? So they come from doctor referrals only. Um, but they are ready to test and they have appointments made uh, for tomorrow. Thank you, Mark. Uh, again, I had that conversation with Dr. Meemark yesterday, again, standing on the desk of these people's desk, saying, I gotta have testing here in Douglas County, and that's been done. So, uh, district commissioners, I wanna assure you that I'm just, I, my, don't let, I'll, allow my calm demeanor fool you that nothing is being done. That's what I've been trained to do in this uh, medical arena is to stay calm under pressure. So what I wanna do, uh, ask our um, uh, Stephanie Thompson, uh, attorney, do we need to go into executive session at this time? Chairman, there are no matters for executive session today. Okay, you said no matters, nothing today? That's, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Board of Commissioners, we have, we do not need to go into executive session, and if there's nothing else to come before this board, um, any other comments? I'm ex excited about our, our testing site that will start on tomorrow. Um, for well, the citizens here in Douglas County, again, based on physician uh, referral, we made one step further in the right direction. And I'm so appreciative of all the support of our Board of Commissioners and, and the patience and consideration from our citizens of Douglas County. Yeah. I promise you, we will still con continue to shield you with education because that's very important in communication along this way. Uh, again, I believe I heard you, Vice Chairman, before I close yeah. up. Yeah, no problem. Two things. Um, make sure that Stephanie um, um, stand in council calls me after this meeting. And secondly, I, I think the sentiment about the testing is I mean, what we're saying is that we want to be more competitive, right? Right. It is supply and demand. Economics 101. What are we doing to be more competitive than the next guy? Right. It's just not don't wait until they do your hand that this is only your allotment. No, you got to go. Let's go talk to Chris. Probably. How do we become more competitive? It's not enough to just sit there, guys. I, I can't worry about everybody else. I get it. It's only so many fish in the sea. I get it. But what are we doing to get be competitive against this scarce resource? So it's the language that we're using that, again, it's one of those where I'm still not hearing it. Show me your competition. Show me how you go get that done. Don't just wait till they do you your hand. We have some independence. You, you are in executive mode. Like, okay, you're going to give me that amount. That's really only covering our, what, what we want to call our employees. But what about everybody else? You don't even have the framework for the numbers. And I keep going back like, guys, y'all, not there. I won't belabor this moment. We can take it offline. But again, we'll, we'll mark this because we're moving so fast. This is not right. like we come to each session and we wait two weeks. That's the reason why, why we got the floor. You got to drive. It's like, guys, this is every day, every right. hour, right? And I'm sure every... You know, every 12 o'clock, 12.05, 1 o'clock, you're doing your thing. So don't get us wrong. We get it. It's moving at lightning speed. So since we got the floor, we're saying, okay, we got to be competitive, though. Duly mm -hmm. noted. I can't worry about the other 158 counties. I get there's going to be amount. Just like Senate Majority Dugan, wouldn't I see that he was able to go get Carol what they needed? That was competitive. Made a phone call. Other people had needs, but it showed up for Carol. And all I can say is I ain't got no problem with that. Commissioner Mitchell said I ain't got no problem with everybody else. But what about us? Mm -hmm. I yield. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Commissioner. You know what I might, you know, my, my saying is there's no room for second place, and we definitely are fighting. And now, again, I wanted to let you know that uh, Senator uh, Dugan's office and I are joined at the hip. In fact, I have direct line into the governor's office. That's how much pushing I've done. Um, and I will make sure I follow with Dr. Meemar, and we'll we'll talk some more because some of those questions y'all had. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell had a great one. How many have we tested out of the 91? How many were uh, not positive, or should I say negative, versus the 91 that are positive? And I'm quite sure she could give me that information, okay? And I'll get you all the information that you asked for. Uh, we are moving full steam ahead in Douglas County. Uh, I can say we've made a lot of a lot more progress than other counties, and we are uh, we we compete. That's what we do here in Douglas County. So I just want to make sure, uh, and I've been trying to keep you all abreast of everything we're uh, doing. And actually, sent you a nice long lengthy email on Friday night or Saturday night. So please look at your emails. We have a, a meeting today, a town hall meeting with Congressman Scott. Board of Commissioners, you're welcome to do that. I sent you the information. So please look in your emails. I'm, I'm, I'm running 100 miles a minute, but I am providing you with up to up to the minute updates as we go. So I just ask at this time, if you just focus on your emails, we also had, uh, we're providing you weekly reports of what's going on in each department. So you could see what, what all our department uh, leaders are doing to make sure that our process is seamless during this COVID-19 situation. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before us, I thank you, and this uh, work session is adjourned. Thank, thank you.